I am so excited to be here physically, you know, the first uh, service mesh conk after COVID. I'm sure, is that for any of you the first time traveling to a real conference after COVID? Raise your hands. Yeah! Very excited you are here. So we are going to talk about, it's a secret. Manage your workload search in service mesh without persisting it. Let me quickly introduce myself. Um, I've been working at IBM for a very long time. I think some of you know me from IBM. Um, I changed to work for Solo about a year ago. So I'm working on open source at Solo. I've been a very long time contributor to the Istio project. One of the founding members uh, currently sits on Istio Steering and Technical Oversight Committee. I wrote a book about Istio. Istio explained to help our user get started with Istio. I'm also one of the new CNCF ambassador, and I run a Hoot live stream, which I learn about service mesh, Istio, Envoy, um, eBPF, GraphQL technologies with you together with the audience. So um, this is service mesh con. I'm sure you've all seen some charts like this, right? The service mesh architecture, right? But today we're going to focus a little bit on the most useful benefit, I guess widely adopted reason for people adopt a service mesh is mutual TLS. Would you agree with that? A lot of people are looking at service mesh because mutual TLS. Raise your hand if that's the reason. Yes, I know. We've heard that repetitively from our customers, right? So we're going to dive into how the certificate is distributed. We're going to dive into how to plug in your external uh, certificate authority. And we're going to also dive into a couple of approaches to not persist your private key on disk. So um, since I come from Istio, I'm going to start using Istio as an example to talk through how things work. I believe other service mesh works similarly last time when I look at them. So if you use the default profile that comes with Istio, um, you will have self-signed certificate, which means the Istio control plan is serving as the certificate authority for you. That means the certificate for for each of your workloads in the service mesh, right? So this is, this is uh, um, typical, but it's not really what you want to run in production, because typically you already have your own PKI system. You probably don't want anything self-signed that's not um, integrated with your existing PKI system. So the way it works is Istio has an agent uh, which runs in the same uh, in the same um, as Envoy proxy in the same uh, Saika. And the Istio proxy, Istio agent sends the certificate signing request to Istio control plane. And then Istio control plane, who acts as the certificate authority, uh, sends the certificate back to Istio agent, then back to the Envoy proxy. So that's how your Envoy proxy gets the certificates, and it also handles um, certificate rotation before it expires. Um, so if you take a look at self-signed uh, root CA, essentially in the Istio system namespace, you're going to see Istio CA secrets. So that's the self-signed generated by Istio control plane at the boot time of the control plane. Uh, you will also see a config map that contains the root um, certificate for the self-signed root. So let's take a look at the generated Istio CA root secret. Essentially, it can 
it contains four of the files. Uh, one is the CA cert, .pem, that's the generated root cert. Um, also the private key. So this may be a concern for some of your organization because it essentially persisted that private key on disk uh, as part of the SCD as a secret. And it also contains empty uh, searching and root cert uh, in this case. So if you decode the C8 uh, key file, you will see the private key, right? So why is this an issue, right? This is like the key to your house or apartment, right? You don't want to give that to anybody. Um, so, and the other thing um, I want to point out is by default, the certificate is good for 10 years. So what this means is you give somebody else the house, oh, the key of your house for 10 years, right? If somebody take it, they can access your house for free for 10 years. So certainly not something you wanted by default. Now let's talk about how the trust uh, is distributed in this model. So uh, when Istio D uh, starts up, it has a, a namespace controller that propagates the Istio CA root cert as a config map to each of the namespace in your Kubernetes system. And when your proxy starts, uh, proxy as a sidecar to your full service, it's going to mount that uh, certificate as a config map on the uh, mount the config map search as a volume into your proxy uh, container. So interestingly, if you use Istio today, if you do a quick check by creating a namespace full, even though without annotate or label it as Saika injector, you would immediately see uh, the Istio D creates uh, the Istio CA root cert for the full namespace. So that's how the root cert is propagated to each of the namespace. Now let's talk about in this model how the trust is distributed. So uh, Istio agent is going to send a certificate signing request to Istio D, right? We talk about that acting also as a certificate authority, which means the certificate and uh, approve the request and send, means the certificate and send the signed certificate back to Istio agent. Uh, in the meanwhile, Istio D also propagates the config map into each of the namespace, which allows uh, the I'm sorry, I should talk about the, in this sequence first. So the first sequence is actually uh, copy the config map into each of the namespace, which allow uh, the proxy to be able to uh, mount the config map at the boot time. And then with the root certificate and also the service account token, the Istio agent can send the certificate signing request, which Istio D looks to check, make sure it's good, approves that, and sends the means uh, certificate back to the Istio agent. So the workload cert by default expires in 24 hours, but that doesn't mean you know the service mesh uh, waits until the last minute to refresh um, the workload cert. So in Istio, there is a configuration as an environment variable, which we don't expect you to config, but for some reason you might. Um, it's a 0.5, which means we will rotate the certificate every 12 hours for you. So uh, way before it expires, we will rotate for you. Um, so now, this is how the default works. And now, let's take a look at how to plug in your own CA. So if you look at uh, Link D, um, it's essentially during install time, you can specify your CA cert, you can specify your issue key, whether using uh, LinkedIn CLI or Helm, so this is not surprising. With Kuma, you can also specify your key and cert as a secret and the config it in the mesh configuration YAML. Um, so the, these are the ways you can plug in your, key, uh, your external CA. With Istio, there are two ways. The first way is through uh, a CA cert uh, secret. The second way is through an uh, API called Mesh Config CA Certificates. So let's take a look at them. So the first thing we want to look at is with CA uh, 
CV search. In this, uh, in this example, essentially you as an admin who is plugging the external CA, you would um, populate the CA search secret in the Istio system namespace where you install the Istio control plane and then you would specify the search and key and also the search chain if it's an intermediate search and also the root search. So you create a secret, populate that into the namespace and when Istio D boots, it's going to check whether the CA search exists. If it exists, it would use it. If it doesn't exist, it would fall back to the self-signed flow, which we just talked about, right? Um, so uh, in this example, then uh, the rest of flow is pretty much the same as what we discussed early on with STLCA root cert as a config map prop uh, propagated to each of the namespace. Um, one issue though, uh, this one still have private key persisted as a as a secret, so may not exactly be what you wanted. Um, all right, so with mesh config, so why there are two ways to do this in Istio? Uh, the reason is we had uh, user sometimes wants uh, multiple root cert, which is a common scenario as you transition maybe from one uh, root cert to another root cert, right, during transition time, or maybe you want to do a federated mesh that has different root cert. So Istio has a, a configurable API to allow you to do that through mesh configuration. So you can config mesh uh, root search, uh, your extra root search in mesh config, which Istio D will propagate to Istio agents through the XDS API. So this is an example of how that looks like. Uh, essentially, you can config CA certificates inside of mesh config, which is part of the Istio operator API, and you can config your certificate right there. So one thing is that this is compatible with uh, Spiffy, um, uh, such as Spell, so very attractive uh, if you're using those environments. Um, so now, um, the next question is, can you plug in multiple CA search for Istio control plan? The answer is yes. You can actually do that for the scenario I was mentioned early to federate um, across different uh, Istio meshes or maybe in the root transition time frame. So in this case, you would have mesh config, uh, Istio uh, actual root cert config through mesh config along with the CA certs as a secret uh, where you uh, install into your Kubernetes. So uh, one thing I want to point out is I find out a little bit confusing is uh, registration authority, uh, which does approve the request as I learned in these, all these concepts. Uh, the other concept is certificate authority, which signs these requests. It typically happens after the registration authority approves the request. Uh, by default, all the flow we just went through Istio D works as uh, RA and also CA. So that's a lot of work by Istio. So now let's take a look at another community project, Istio CSR. This is a very cool project. It's essentially uh, Istio CSR acting as a registration authority. So the certificate signing request was sent to uh, Istio CSR, which approves uh, the request and forward to certificate manager, which acts as a certificate manager. Uh, Certificate authority. Notice in this case, uh, one thing really interesting is Istio D is not acting as CA or I. So you have to kind of disable these functions in Istio D um, to tell Istio, you know, I don't want you to be my CA. I don't want you to be my I. And I guess uh, one biggest advantage of this approach is certificate manager is very well known, right? So it supports a lot of issuers. So all that issuers that certificate manager supports, you know, comes with uh, this approach, like Vault and uh, many of the other ones. But uh, one thing I do want to point out is uh, in this approach, private keys here um, persisted as secret. 
The other thing the Istio community is uh, innovating is the Kubernetes CSR integration. So Kubernetes has a CSR API. I believe the B API just become stable in the most recent Kubernetes release. Um, but in Istio, the integration with this is still uh, actively under development. It's still experimental. So in this mode, uh, Istio D works as RA and uh, Kubernetes CA or any other customer CA who choose to implement the Kubernetes CSR API as a controller can act as CA. So on um, this approach, when community first introduced, one of the huge benefit of this approach is it doesn't need to persist the private key in Kubernetes cluster, which is very cool. So let's walk through how this approach works. So essentially, uh, the service A or full here um, would send uh, the certificate signing request to Istio D, and uh, Istio D would act as uh, registration authority, right? It would approve the request, and uh, it would actually generate the Kubernetes CSR as a requester, so sending, notice the CSR request here from, uh, from Istio agent to Istio D, it's just normal certification request, and the Istio D to certificate authority in this case is actually Kubernetes certificate uh, CSR request. The, the format is a little bit different, which I will explain shortly. Uh, so in this case, uh, Istio D is going to approve the request and generate a Kubernetes uh, CSR request and then forward to Kubernetes CA or other CA who implements uh, the Kubernetes CSR controller and um and then eventually uh, issues the certificate back and through Istio D is sending the certificate back to the Istio agent. So that's the flow uh, of this flow, how it works. And uh, when I take a detailed look of how the certificate works in this case, so you can see uh, this is a X509 certificate request that I generated. Uh, using the OpenSSL key command. And this request essentially, and on the right side, is a Kubernetes certificate signing request, right? Notice it's different than the certificate, typically standard certificate uh, request. And the request essentially in the body of here with uh, base64 encoded uh, format. So essentially what's on the left side of, uh, with base64 encoding is part of the request of the Kubernetes certificate signing request. You also have the requester here, in this case is the groups, and you also have uh, whoever is the signer uh, for this uh, Kubernetes certificate request. So um, one approach, uh, with this approach, it does require implementation of Kubernetes uh, CSR controller. So um, by default, Kubernetes has a default Kubernetes uh, CSR controller. Uh, I believe third manager it, it also implement a, a Kubernetes uh, CSR controller, even though I believe they said it's, uh, it's alpha, it's uh, not uh, production ready yet. You could also implement your customer controller. So there are API for implement controller, so it's all pluggable, uh, which is very nice. But one question um, I would say is uh, there are very limited controller out there because the Kubernetes CSR API is very new and just become mature. So the controller has not been picked up. Like for instance, certificate manager has a controller, but even with that controller, it's having very limited issue being supported for that controller. The other thing to think through is, do you want your service mesh also using a Kubernetes control plane trust domain, right? Because you may not want to use the same trust domain as your Kubernetes for signing your workload certificates. If so, this may not be a good approach uh, if you choose to use the Kubernetes controller. All right, um, the other approach uh, which uh, we're doing at Solo is not changing anything in Istio, is we actually run a sidecar next to Istio. In this case, Istio 
continue to control plane continue to act as CA and RA, and the sidecar is uh, taking the responsibility of uh, getting uh, getting the certificate signed uh, uh, with VAUT. So let's take a look how this approach works. Um, so if you have multiple uh, Kubernetes cluster, multiple SDOD, right? In this case, you would result uh, less API to your PKI system, less API cost, because uh, essentially you're still using SDOD to sign your workload certificate, but the intermediate key and certs would be generated from the sidecar to your PKI system, like a vault. So essentially, only the sidecar costs your PKI system, and then each of your service still gets their workload certificate from STLD. So this could potentially allow very large scale of uh, service mesh with uh, many clusters. One last approach I also want to highlight is what we are working in upstream, uh, upcoming upstream 1.14 of the still release uh, with spell integration. So the HPE team, shout out to their team, contribute this function in upstream. So. Uh, for folks who don't know Spell, uh, it's really cool that it can attest workload and issue spiffy identities by a test workload. It can attest the workload by like the image name, by namespace, by pod, so it can, and it's configurable. So you can tell Spell how you want to attest your workload, and Spell can based on the rules and configuration to attest it for you. Uh, so in this case, the Spell server would act as CA and I for you, and uh, it, it can support two key um, management strategies. So you could config spell to say, you know, I want to persist the private key in memory, or I want to persist the private key, I'm sorry, I don't want to persist the private key, or I persist the private key on disk. So that's um, that's configurable with spell. And if you use this mode, don't be confused uh, that you still have Istio CA secrets, because that's not really being used, because spell is working as the CA and I, not Istio D. So uh, just walking through real quickly how this model works. Essentially, uh, Istio opened up a hook point uh, to allow a, a UDS socket uh, on Istio agent. So so whenever Istio agent boots, it's going to detect whether the socket exists. Uh, if the socket exists, uh, it will detect, you know, uh, to fetch uh, the secret, uh, attempt to fetch the secret from the socket, and then the spell agent is going to do a testation on the workload of the of the service, uh, just making sure it has the right it's the right uh, workload with the namespace, service account, and image name. And then once that's all done, it can you know issue the certificate workload certificate back to um, back to the sidecar. So the normal flow, uh, XDS configuration still goes through Istio agent to Istio control plane. It's just the certification bootstrap flow is uh, going through. Because of the socket existed, it would go through the spell agent in this case. So we actually did a Hoot live stream just a week ago. So if you are interested in this, check out our YouTube channel, uh, Solo IO. Check out our most recent Hoot. Um, I only have one minute, so in conclusion, we talk about many approaches, right? We talk about the default, how the default works. We talk about how you plug in your own CA is possible, how you plug in your own RA is also possible, um, how there are some of the approaches out there to, uh, not, to allow you not persisting your private key, so such as Kubernetes uh, CSR, control plane sidecar, and also uh, the external CA integration with Envoy SDS uh, with Spell as an example. Now I think I may only have one minute for questions. Do I have a minute for questions or no? All right, there's a question there. 
so uh, it's still CSI is actually very well known in the community. One of the challenges is uh, the persist uh, private key is a security concern. So if that's a concern for you, um, you might want to see if that's really the right approach for you. Um, that's the main thing. One, uh, a couple of things I like about Istio CSI, it does support many issues. My main concern is the persisting, persisting. yeah, the private key. Like your private key is like the key to your house and typically the root key is good for 10 years. So if you persist on disk, if somebody grab it, you know, they can access the whole thing for a very long time. Well, the, the approach, at least based on the tutorial I've gone through, you still kind of have to generate, yes, you can provision, you can use certificate manager to create the keys and certs, but the way it's your CSI implemented today, it still requires you to create that in the installation directory as a secret if you ever tried that project. Yeah. Well, I hope this is helpful. I'm out of time. Thank you.